cold here, hence coffee. Um, and I've been ill for the last sort of five-ish days, maybe four days. Um, ill in a special way that means I can't work, but I can play video games. So I've just played Fallout 4, like, almost non-stop. Uh, and today, Invisible Ink. Um, but this actually was rather annoying, because I was really enjoying what I was working on beforehand, which was um, redoing the way the interior of ships are generated in the heat signature. So I took the game to Indicade in Los Angeles a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was probably like a month ago now. Um, and I've lost all track of time since then. I showed it to... I was doing like a two-step thing, first to Indicade. Not really for... Um, uh, we weren't showing it in Indicade, we weren't like, selected as part of it. Um, but I wanted to go anyway, and uh, there were going to be loads of uh, my friends there, um, most of whom are game designers, and uh, some games press, but not many. But most of the US games press are based in San Francisco, so I thought while I'm in Los Angeles, I might as well just drop by San Fran and um, show it to them as well. So the second part of the trip was showing it to the press. And it was quite good to show it to designer friends a week before you show it to the press, because then you see all the uh, problems, actually just a lot of technical problems, not even design problems first. But um, uh, the version I actually had with me at the first, the time I first showed it to, um, the time I first showed it, out there was uh, a build which crashed every time anything exploded. <laughs> and if you know anything about heat signature, you'll know that's fairly serious flaw. Um, there was something else. Oh, there was also, oh yeah, one of the, it only has three mission types, and one of those mission types uh, did not function, did not generate the actual thing that you would need to do the mission on. It was uncompletable. Um, so that was cool. <laughs> uh, and I also just had a lot of really long conversations with um, very smart people about uh, I'd explain to them the concept of the game and I could see some parts of it would excite them and some parts of it they would just sort of look at me blankly and the thing that got the blankest looks from everybody was um, this idea that each time you play the game that life is a person and when that person dies everything they have is lost and all of you know their life is permanently over there's no save or reload or anything um, and then you start as a new person in the same galaxy that part itself is people kind of get and say, oh, some of them like, quite like that idea. But then the thing that was puzzling or just not exciting anyone <laughs> was the idea that the person you play as next might be working for a different faction and uh, they might be working for the enemy faction of the one you just played as. And their uh, hesitation, this is purely my speculation, but I think, probably comes down to, you know, well then what am I trying to do long term? In fact, um, my friend Alan Hazelden, who actually hadn't played the game, um, said exactly that. Like, well, why, why would I? What, what am I trying to achieve in the long run? Why would I keep coming back to this to like, you know, work on an ongoing goal? Um, and I said, you wouldn't. <laughs> or I said, you know, uh, hopefully the game itself is fun enough that you uh, just want more of that. But there is no sort of long-term progression. And this is one of those areas where you have to be careful that you're not getting attached to the wrong thing about the game. Um, because I really like this idea that each life is a person. And when you die, when your character dies, your character really is dead forever. And it, there's no fudging, there's no uh, faking or rewinding or um, counterfactual messing around with the universe to make sure you can, you know, uh, keep playing as a player. Everything is just, you know, it's a big persistent universe. When a person dies, that person really is dead. You just control a different person. The only sort of magic we do is we switch you to a different guy. Um, and that I love that idea because it just sort of feels way more natural than the way games currently do it. And if you're making a roguelike, or you're making something with permadeath and randomization where you don't, the player's not repeating progress because they, they're not working towards the same thing each time, um, or they're not playing the same levels each time. Uh, that was <laughs> air quotes with coffee in the hand. You can't do both of them, so it's just like a single pair of quotes. Um, then it, uh, it doesn't matter that you don't have save and reload. You don't need those anyway. So why have a fake idea of like the whole universe resetting? I mean, Splunky actually sort of semi-fictionalizes the restarting mechanic. It claims that the caves keep changing. They don't really explain who you are or why you keep coming back from death or whether you are or whether we're just rewinding in time before you ever went through it. Uh, so that's a little bit left uncertain, I think. Uh, but to me, it seems like a logical step to just, let's just jump to actually having this be completely simulated, completely real, like every life is a person. Anyway, that's the thing I like. Um, but there's no part of that, nothing about that inherently means that you should, you must be playing people on both sides of a war and uh, 
defeating your previous progress. <laughs> I, I do want you to be able to play as all the factions. If we're going to do that, well, we are doing factions, but uh, what I mean is uh, if I'm going to bother to make all these different parties of who are kind of maybe not actually at war, but kind of like pushing against each other over territory, then um, I want them all to be sympathetic in some way or at least have something cool about them that you would a reason you'd want to play as them and then if I'm going to make you want to play as them there's no reason to stop you from playing as them um, but I think it makes sense that your first experience of the game should be a bit more focused maybe and not um, just switching between these characters who are all working at cross purposes and you never achieving anything lasting or you could achieve something lasting but you'd have to sort of decide and uh Right when you're trying to learn a new game, there's so much you don't know. Just everything. Every icon, every symbol, every button, every control is totally mysterious to you. And you will learn 10% of those in your first you know, 15 minutes. So 15 minutes in, there's still 90% of the stuff you just don't understand at all. And I'm a big fan of... I don't hate to restrict the player, but I like to um, keep, your, keep what I present to you simple the first time you play. And there's a big difference in my mind between the first time you play and the start of your character's life. And a lot of games don't make that distinction. Every time you start a character, I'm just replaying Invisible Inca, like I said, and uh, because I'm starting a new campaign, it's throwing me up basic tutorial messages again and again, just like, here's how alarm systems work, and it pops up and stops the whole game to tell you about this stuff. And it's like, hey, fucking no, <laughs> I've played this game for like 50 hours. Um, and in Heat Signature, you know, each new life is, in, is a new character, but we know it's not your first character. We know you've played before. So all the tutorial stuff, all of the things that we restrict or um, keep simple for you would only be for your playthrough, for you as the player and not the character. So if you, when you start a fresh character after eight hours of the game, we know you know it, understand everything. We're not going to reset the tutorials. We're not going to restrict you in any way. Um, so the kind of restriction we could do early on to keep things simple and to give you a kind of progression goal is... Uh, we could restrict you to one faction and you could choose which one it is. So the first time you play, we, there's five factions on this, you know, you're seeing the galaxy map. Um, you see all their territories, you hover over them, you get a description. Each faction kind of describes themselves and says, here's who we are and what we're fighting for or whatever. Um, and then you pick one that you like the sound of and then you're locked into that faction for uh, your first X lives. And it probably wouldn't be a number of lives, it would probably be more like this faction is trying to achieve something. They have 15 stations and they need 20 to actually be self-sustainable and to, for their people to survive and not be in danger. So once they've got those extra five stations, if you manage to accomplish that for them, um, then they are kind of happy is maybe the wrong word, but they don't urgently need the help of special space commandos to help them out. They might still have work for them, but they're not sort of in dire straits. And so the idea is you'd be kind of aligned to that faction until you get them stable. And then once they're stable that sort of unlocks the second faction. And it wouldn't be a big kind of, um, there wouldn't be a story reason for that or anything. It would just be, you go back to the character select screen the next time you die or the next time you retire your character. And just as, a long, as well as the usual three or four red people you might you could play as, there's a blue person as well. And uh, hopefully you, you'll find that interesting and curious and think, oh cool, I can play as a blue person. Let's play as a blue person. Red and blue are not the factions. <laughs> um, I guess that would be like Foundry and the Freezers, but those words mean nothing to you yet. Um, so they might as well be called red and blue. And that's telling me it's been nine minutes. Um, so, yeah, I think I might do that. I think I'm going to lock you into one faction until you get them to a certain level, a certain level of, of success, of establishment, and then... Uh, unlock another one for you and then you kind of work through them in that way and that way you're kind of progressing through unlocking the whole galaxy um, the whole galaxy is still unlocked you can go anywhere and do anything but we just don't uh, give you characters of a certain faction until you get to a certain uh, until you progress to a certain amount and again your characters would die and lose all their stuff but you as a player would be making persistent progress through the galaxy and through the kind of exploring every side of this conflict um, that seems like a, a good route to go down. Um, I should also say that like, this doesn't necessarily mean you have to play, if you're thinking, oh, isn't it going to be like um, uh, tedious to have to kind of, kind of work through it to get to the faction you really want. I mean, A, I want to let you pick which faction you want right up front, so just pick the one you like. Uh, and B, we can just tweak the balance of how long it takes. It might just be five games, five playthrough plays. Playthrough's the wrong word. Five lives. Um, 
before you unlock the next one. Um, or it could be, you know, 40. I don't know how that will feel. It was. It's going to be something that we can just tweak and balance very, very easily. Um, and so there's that. And then I also think I might let you kind of... We might even limit what loot you find initially. So the, the initial set of tools you have are pretty simple. And then the more complex and esoteric and exotic gadgets, instead of already being out there when you first play, uh, as you play, you'll take on missions to steal the components of those things and then invent them. And then that invention, like say it's the concussion grenade, like a non-lethal grenade type, um, and you've had to steal a grenade and some non-lethal tech and something else from these various ships around the galaxy, then you take them back to your station and the technicians invent that thing, and then it's named after the character you're playing as then and there. So it's the Francis Concussion Grenade. Um, and that will be invented for all characters you play in the future, for all factions. Eventually the technology would proliferate throughout the galaxy and you know, everyone would have access to it. You'd find it in shops, you'd find it as loot, and it would always be named the Francis Concussion Grenade if, you were, if your character is called Francis. If I was playing, it probably you know, is no more likely to be called Francis than in, if anyone else was playing. <laughs> it's just a name. It doesn't really need that much explaining. So yeah, I think that's probably what I'm going to do persistence-wise. I haven't done any of this stuff yet. It's just purely thoughts, things that have come out of my trip and kind of distilling those things down. Um, uh, but when I get to that stage, I think that's how I'm going to probably tackle it. 